Okay, I'm going to kind of wing it here on how Peter's text relates to Paul's. And it's kind of funny. This is why you never want to read the Bible in translation because, especially in a metered passage, once you see what the meter is doing to the passage, then it's like, wow, I never want to read the Bible any other way. Now you have to understand when they're doing these metered things, they mean it like Greek drama. Somebody is getting on stage to be a witness for that time period. So think of a blank stage, you know, because classical Greek drama. You got a blank stage, and a guy with a really nice voice comes on stage to, to recite the lines. Okay? So pretend that I can actually talk well and pretend that. You know, close your eyes and think of an actor standing on a totally blank stage. It's got, you know, it's got a, a, a floor, usually made of wood, and then some kind of backdrop, which is, you know, painted or tapestry or something to be evocative of the time and place from which he speaks. Okay? So now, Peter, the one sent by Jesus Christ. That's covering the years 18 B.C. to 8 B.C. Peter, the one sent by Jesus Christ. Literally, Peter, apostle of Jesus Christ. Okay? And has all those meanings. Because in the Greek, classical Greek drama didn't use prepositions. And this would be the case using for by by agency of okay the preposition would be n but he doesn't need it not in classical greek okay so you see you see the point of the first opening line of the play this is a play of time peter that's the name of the actor peter the one sent by jesus christ because apostello is the verb for apostolas okay peter the apostle of Jesus Christ. See? And he's standing on the stage and you're getting all caught up in the moment. Now that's a reference to a character of the time of 18 B.C. to 8 B.C. This is before Paul's text in the upper window that's highlighted in yellow. Okay? This is before it. He's wrapping around Paul at this point. Paul's greeting doesn't count as meter because the greeting kept on changing by which you know church got the letter so we can't use Paul's meter in verses 1 through 2 of Ephesians as meter so now we go back again I'm trying to get you in the mood here guy standing on a blank stage I don't know what kind of backdrop he'd use Peter the one sent by Jesus Christ Peter Apostle of Jesus Christ. Okay, now here's what makes this so ironic. This is a 10, which means he's talking from 18 BC to 8 BC. Peter might not have even been born yet. But what he's doing is he's setting you up for the foreordination of God. Peter was known to God since eternity past. God had already elected Peter since eternity past. Peter was already sent by Jesus Christ, who wasn't even born yet, since eternity past. Peter was already appointed apostle of Jesus Christ since eternity past. See how those four words put in that time, 18 BC to 8 BC, give you so much more of an introduction into what Peter's going to say. Isn't that clever? 18 BC, Peter, the one sent by Jesus Christ, who, by the way, wasn't even born yet, and Jesus Christ wasn't even born yet, so that has to be the whole foreign nation of God. See? Isn't that cute? This is why I love Bible so much. Nobody's smarter than God, and nobody's wittier, and nobody cares more. It just makes me cry every time I read scripture. Peter, the one sent by Jesus Christ, before God 
even birthed Peter before God even birthed Jesus Christ. In the eternity past, he was appointed apostle. He was sent, but he hadn't gotten on stage yet. But he's on stage. Yeah, he's on stage in the mind of God. See? Isn't that cute? Okay. To the elect refugees in diaspora. To the elect refugees in diaspora. Eclectois para epidemois diasporas. See? Isn't that cute? That covers the period from 8 BC to 480. Diasporas is when Christ is born. Because they're using their own Anno Domini accounting. So the last four syllables is when Christ is born. 8 BC. Eclectois. Now what had gotten elected from 8 BC to 5 BC? Well in 5 BC that's when Mary gets the Annunciation. See if you know your meter from the Magnificat you're going to laugh at this. And between 8 BC and 5 BC what had happened? Well she was like you know at least for a year she knew Joseph. And was already setting everything in motion to illustrate the first line. Petras Apostolas Jesu Christo. Okay, he set that up. Now we're at APC. Eclectois. Elected. Who's elected? Well, Mary gets elected by Tois <clears throat> to bear his, you know, to bear Christ. See, Jesu Christo. So by 5 BC, it's his election in her. Isn't that cute? He's not born yet. 5 BC, she gets the Annunciation. Luke 26 compared to Luke 136. 126 compared to 136. Very funny. Very funny Greek. Eclectois. Yeah, and what else is being elected? Well, every single year, everybody in the diaspora who's a Jew is supposed to go to Jerusalem at least once a year for Passover. And they go at Passover, they go at Hanukkah. Hanukkah is when Christ is going to be born. She's getting the announcement in Adar. That's what Luke tells you. Eclectois. 8 BC to 5 BC. Election. Go out. Come to Jerusalem. Yeah, because everybody knew from the meter in Daniel 9, Isaiah 53, Psalm 90, and then ending with Mary's own Magnificat meter here, that Christ was going to be born. They knew when. <coughs> they knew it was going to be 4 BC Hanukkah. They didn't know it was going to be Hanukkah until Zerubbabel, but that was back in 522 BC. So they've known since 522 BC, the exact year and the exact day. So God, God has elected an exact birth date. So 8 BC to 5 BC, everybody's going to start wanting to hoof it over to Israel, which will take about two years. See, electoids. You see the, the drama of this? The, to the elect. Yeah, and God would be notifying everybody from 8 BC to 5 BC. Hurry up and come to Jerusalem, please. It's time for him to be born on Hanukkah, just like promised in Haggai 2. Hurry up, get here. Because it'll take two years if you're coming from like the Americas to get to Israel. All right, because you can hug the coasts. You'd have to go all the way up north on America, around Greenland and all that stuff, come back down through Finland and, you know, hug the European coast, and then you get finally to the Mediterranean, then you'd have to go all the way to, you know, Israel. And it was like 20, 20 possibly 40 days to go from Rome proper to get to Israel, depend, depending on the weather and a bunch of other stuff, okay? So you can get there in the three years that Eclectois covers. Eclectois parepidemois diasporas. You just see somebody standing on stage, a new actor now. A new actor, the Herald, is calling out to the elect refugees in the diaspora. Come on over, hurry up. He's going to be born at diasporas. Now, why is diaspora so clever? Again, this is a play. Peter is real fond of Greek plays. 
He was an expert with Greek plays. Okay, that's why he's using classical Greek here. Okay, he's making a play on classical and possessive when he does this. Okay, diasporas. What does that mean? Well, the Jews were in diaspora, and why did God put them there? So they could what? Witness to the Gentiles in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. And there were a lot of Jews in those areas, a lot of them. A lot of them in Rome too. So this ends at 4, 4 AD. So the actor that's citing this line goes off stage. Or maybe he stays on stage and recites the next line. Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, province of Asia, and Bithynia. In other words, the call is going out to the Gentiles too. This is 4 AD. Christ is four years old at the end of this verse. The shepherds had, did, had, did, had done them. Um, the Luke 1 shepherd, 2 shepherds had done their announcing. Okay, right here where the black is. So that gives four years for the word to go out. And like I said, you could get to Israel from anywhere in the world in about two years. So it, news traveled because everybody traveled through Israel. It was the nexus of three continents. So everybody knew by here. Okay, so everybody includes nearby Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Come on over. Come to Israel. If you're interested in God, you got the notice. So this is, you know, the next 19 years from Christ age 4 to Christ age 23. Mary benchmarked Christ at age 23. So Peter's playing on the Magnificat when he does this. The Magnificat went out at this point, 5 BC. So everybody who was a Gentile and was interested in knowing the Messiah, because they would have heard about it from the Jews living there, they hoofed it. Now, a lot of people, most people in fact, are not interested in God. They use God as a designer label to make them feel good about themselves. Okay, but if you're really interested in God, honey, you drop everything you, you got and you go after him. That's exactly what Mark's gospel says. The fishermen are called by Christ and immediately they drop their nets and they just go follow Christ. In one case, James and John, their father's in the boat with them and all the slaves too. And obviously the father agreed to it. They just dropped everything they did and went and followed him. That means the father and all those guys in the boat got proof he was God immediately. Which is what Mark says, immediately. So Mark's going to be playing on this kind of text. He understood what Peter was doing here with the, you know, epicorigal, that's Peter's favorite word, to fund a play, the Greek play in particular. To Pontus, to Pontus, Galatians, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Yeah, from the time Christ is age four until he's 23 years old when Mary had broken her meter in the Magnificat. I wondered about that. Now I understand. I didn't, when I did the Magnificat videos, I didn't understand why she broke her meter at age 23. I, but Peter sure did because he's using it right here. Christ age 23 at the end of, her, of the end of the uh, phrase. Christ age 4 here. See, isn't this more meaningful? I've only covered one verse and we've already, we've already looked at the foreordination of God, the calling out of God to all the refugees, meaning, you know, anybody who wants to believe in God but is, but is outside Israel, in the diaspora. And diaspora is the theme of his letter. And at this point, he's only up to Christ stage four. Is this clever or what? You wouldn't think just looking at the text that it would have so much meaning relevant to the time that it's covering until you think about it. And then the Gentiles, a prophecy to the Gentiles. He is the light of the Gentiles. Well, here they are. And the Jews are living among them, and the Jews know the prophecy and the timing. So if they didn't get there by the time he was born, which is right here, if they don't get there then, they've got, you know, more time to get there. Because he doesn't announce himself as king till he's 30. So at this point, he's 23. 
And so you can safely assume that by this point the word got out to Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. And anybody who could go and wanted to go went. So they're there by the time he's 23. Because if God is going to foreordain Peter back when Herod's just redoing the temple, and really before, then what? He's not gonna. He's not gonna have a plan for getting these people there if they want to go. You know, if you want something that God wants, He'll He'll bend He'll bend heaven and earth to get you there. I'm a testimony to that in my own life. I wish I could tell you the details, but you wouldn't believe them because they're so spectacular. So I know how He does this, and any most other Christians who know God know this. He works in your life. And he makes it real clear he's the one doing it. So you know you're not hallucinating. So they would know. They'd be there by the time he's 23. And he's the light to the Gentiles. And, you know, you tell two people and they tell two people and so on and so on. Like the old hair shampoo commercial. All right? See, that's just one verse. And look at all the meaning. So let's go through it again. Peter. The one sent by Jesus Christ before he even existed, before Jesus Christ existed, back in 18 BC when Solomon was getting the temple ready for Jesus Christ by rebuilding it. Ha <laughs> ha. 18 to 8 BC. To the elect, covering 8 BC to 5 BC when Mary gets the Annunciation. To the refugees. Yep. Because after Mary gets the Annunciation, everybody's told about it. And now the refugees find out. Because everybody knew the timeline. To the refugees. Refugees Jewish, refugee Gentile. In the diaspora outside Israel. Isn't that cute? So now Christ is four years old. And man, 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 man. And feet are moving to Israel. To see this newborn son. Light of the Gentiles in the Diaspora, Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. See, now the fulfillment of the prophecy to the Gentiles is going to take place. And he's there, Jack. And he's growing up, Jack. And he's 23 at the end of this verse. Is that clever or what? Now we come to verse 2. He's 23 here. So now, kata, according to, per. The foreknowledge, yeah, we had that up here. So a new actor maybe gets on stage. Per the foreknowledge of God the Father, by means of the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, now what does that cover? The next 17 years, and he's going to die by this time. 23 here. 10 years later, he's going to die. So look at how clever this is. 2... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Christ is dead at the word "n" in Greek, meaning by means of or in. Yeah, he's in the Holy Spirit. He's in the heavenlies. He's in heaven. He's with the Father. "N" also means with. Is this clever or or not? That covers his life from age 24 to age 33. And at that point, age 33, he's crucified. He goes to heaven. He's with the Father. He's in the Holy Spirit. He was in the Holy Spirit the whole time. So now, after he's dead, the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit over the next seven years. Next seven years. From 33 A.D. to 40 A.D. Is this clever or what? It really ends up being 41. Hagiasmu numatas. Okay? Hagiasmu numatas. I might have counted the syllables wrong. Kata to pro three no four scene five te. Six, U seven, Pat eight, Tros nine, 
and oh that might be a 16 kata prognosing teu patrosen that's 10 syllables hagiasmoi numatas that's 17 oh yeah because it's 7 syllables sorry okay so this covers from 33 AD to 7 to 40 AD that's when Caligula's gonna be there you know and all the rest of it and it's cute well Caligula actually comes about 41 okay is this cute Christ is dead here and means with it by means of by agency of inside yeah he's inside the holy of holies in heaven he's with God the Father he's with the Holy Spirit and he's in the Holy Spirit even as the Holy Spirit is in him because he stays in his humanity forever he's resurrected so now it's legal for the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit to begin in church which started when in 33 AD on Pentecost oh theme of Acts 1 is this clever see it's not just syrupy words it's tied to a particular time and when you go through syllable like by syllable like I'm doing here one syllable equals one year see how much more you get out of it so when an actor standing on the stage saying hi I'm now covering Christ age 24 to AD 40 after he's dead kata prognosin teo patros and hagias moi numatos 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 is how it be pronounced See how meaningful that is? According to the foreknowledge of God the Father by means of the sanctifying work of the Spirit. Covering from A.D. 24 to A.D. 40. Each word telling you something about that time. Christ is dead here. Yep, he's in all right. He's in heaven. He's paid for us. It's done. So now the sanctifying work of the Spirit can begin right on Pentecost all the way to 40 AD when this little segment ends. Isn't that cute? Alright. So then we come to the next part. Because of is how this ought to be translated. It's mistranslated in all Bibles. Ice. Hupa coin. Obedience. Because of the obedience. It's an arthritis. There's no fronting definite article here so it's not talking about your obedience it's talking about Christ's as we find out when we keep reading I supercoin kai rantismon chaimatos Jesu Christu okay because of this is why the Holy Spirit sanctifying work can happen okay because of the obedience even the sprinkling atoning blood of Jesus Christ. That's how the verse ought to be translated. Let's do it again because it's mistranslated in all Bibles I can find. Because of, that's the big mistranslation they make. The obedience, even, that's the second mistranslation they make. Kai is a sense of there. Even the atoning, sprinkling work is implied the word work of the blood of Jesus Christ one more time because of the obedience even the atoning blood of Jesus Christ that covers the next 16 years and what is happening over the next 16 years from 40 AD it's covering all of 41 so we'll say all of 41 AD to the end of 58 AD or 50 57 okay 16 and 40 is 57, which is a very pregnant word in, in Hebrew prophecy. Okay? Because of the obedience of the atoning work of Jesus Christ, what's happening there? 40 AD, the Gospels are going out, Matthew's has already been written, and all the news, he's risen, he paid, his atoning work is done, it's due to his obedience, be saved, believe in Christ, it's finished. Everything that was predicted about him in the Old Testament has come true. So that's when the apostles, including Peter, are going out giving the message 
to who? The refugees in the diaspora. See, first they were supposed to come to Israel, and now everybody's going out to them, announcing the obedience and atoning work of Jesus Christ. Paul was in that number. Peter was in that number. The twelve were in that number. The twelve were apostles to the Jews, but they were going out to the diaspora, right up here. See, Peter's linking it all together. And in, until you know that these are specific gears in question, you don't get the wit here. Is this awesome or what? He, they're announcing the, the obedience and atoning work, blood of Jesus Christ. It's finished. It's happened. See, that's why Peter's using the word rantismon here. You sprinkle blood on the mercy seat in the temple to signify Messiah to come. Well, he's come now. So they're going to be spending from 40 A.D. to 57 A.D., end of 57 A.D., announcing it. All right? Announcing it. So 57 is real important in Jewish prophecy. It was used poignantly by uh, Psalm 90 first. Um, when Moses set up the law, the number of days between the beginning, the first day of Passover, and Pentecost was 57 days. Jews get it wrong. Numbers 28, 26 tells you that you start counting the 50 days from the last day of Passover, which is the last, the, the end of the week. All right? So it's a total of 57 days. It's another 57 days from Pentecost to 9th Ave, when the temple will go down. That's why Peter's using that here. Because he's announcing the temple's going down. That's the theme of his letter. So you have to become the new stones of the temple. You become the new priests of the temple. Living stones, royal priesthood. That's the theme of 1 Peter. So you see why this is so important to use 57 here? It's really 58. 22. 22. 32. And 9. Is. Um, 41. 41 and 17 ends up being 58. But 58 is evocative of 57 because Daniel used it also to illustrate why the temple was going down due to Manasseh. That's Daniel's meter is 58. Peter's playing on Daniel. Okay, but it still means 57 also. Isaiah uses 56 and so does um, Psalm 90 because that's the number of days between Pentecost and Ninth Ab, number of days between. Um, first day of Passover and Pentecost. So 56, 57, 58. 58 is saying, hi, it's too late. Okay? So by this point, it's already a done deal. And the Jews had missed their, you know, Pentecost. So now they're going to get Ninth Ave. So it's real poignant. See, if you know the meter, look at all this significance. And we're talking 58 AD at this point beginning of it okay and then the final line in verse 2 because I'm going to cut this video after it grace to you grace to you even peace prosperity in overabundance this means this plethuno means a crop specifically a crop that multiplies in productivity so much it's way beyond what you expected so you have super profit and that's what irene means it means reconciliation with god it means peace and it means prosperity as a result so that's why plethuno is used here so you'd say grace to you even the peace or the prosperity of overabundance grace to you even the prosperity of overabundance that would be what the last actor for verse 2 would be saying on stage. And what does that cover? 58 to 68. A.D. You see how clever this is? So that's why when we he says 66 because he's using a different Roman AUC or he's using Roman AUC in our A.D. terms. You call that 68. That's when the temple's going to go down. Jerusalem is under siege at the time Peter writes. 
Everybody knows that already. It's under siege by Vespasian, who's going to end up being the last of the four emperors that year, and by Titus, his adopted son. Titus will end up taking Jerusalem down, beginning on the first day of Passover and ending it on 114 days later, 57 plus 57, the 9th of Ab, that's according to Jewish tradition. It was the 28th, 29th of August, 70 AD. For Military History Magazine, they have articles on it with sources. Um, 1995 edition in December. I just happen to remember that's where I saw it. But it's in a lot of places. You can Google on this and know the date. So that's, two, that's within two years. Actually, one and a half years. And the reason why it ended up taking an extra one and a half years is that Titus didn't want to take down the city. He was trying to negotiate with the Jews in the city some kind of surrender. And they wouldn't surrender, so he finally had to burn it down. He didn't want to burn it down, according to Josephus. But the temple ended up burning in the whole city. Okay? So that's how you can get so much out of you know, because when you read this in English, I'm sorry, my eyes just glazed over. I'm sure you did too. Oh, Peter, Apostle of Jesus Christ, and the elect refugees in the Asperopodus, Galatians, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, according to the prayer knowledge of God the Father and the sanctifying work of the Spirit, because of the obedience of the atoning blood of Jesus Christ, grace to you, and peace in prosperity and multiply. That's how so many people just read it, knowing nothing about what Peter's really saying here. You see the difference? Peace out. Okay, I forgot to read this for you and translate it so that you can see it. Let's go through it so you know how to read it. Charis, Humin, Kai, Irene, Pletunte. I'm using old Bible Greek pronunciation, not the new. Okay? It's got American accent, I can't help that. But I, it's closer to the real Greek. Charis, Humi, Kai, Irene, Pleithunte. And I'll translate it. Charis, Grace, Humi, to you. Kai, even. Irene, peace, prosperity, reconciliation is the first meaning. Plethunte, be multiplied. Let's do it again. Charis, grace. Humen, to you. Kai, even. Irene, reconciliation, peace, prosperity. Plethunte, be multiplied. Okay, let's now pick up where we left off, which is between 58 AD and 68 AD. Grace to you, even prosperity be multiplied. You could, you know, more direct English or better English, you'd say, grace and peace be multiplied to you. Grace and prosperity be multiplied to you. Actor on the stage. Grace and prosperity be multiplied to you. Covering the period of AD 58 to AD 68. Okay? Or you can say AD 56 when Paul wrote to, or 57, just after Paul wrote, to AD 50, 66 when Peter's writing. Now think about that for a minute, because unfortunately we are so churchified that we don't think about what the Bible words mean. And that's why this meter is so helpful to interpreting scripture. Okay, it's not Bible codes, it's not some fancy dancing. Yes, they used it as a, a way to memorize scripture, but it's got meaning, honey. What was going on between, let's say, 56 and 66 AD? What was going on? Peter's applying those words to that specific time period. So now think, what was happening? Scripture, hello, he's writing scripture. What is scripture? The word of God. What is the word of God to you? Multiply prosperity, honey. 
peace with God. That's how you learn to be saved. It multiplies. The word multiplies in you. He's playing to Mary when he says that because Mary uses the Magnificat when she says, my soul magnifies the Lord. Paul did that also, but he does it. He, he had just done that during this time. Um, he, it's the Greek verb is megaluno. Plethuno is a play on megaluno. Megaluno is the sowing. Plethuno is the reaping. Okay? Mary and her Magnificat used megaluno. It means to magnify by multiplying. Plethuno means to multiply a crop in, you know, in the actual crop coming up. Okay, well, what crop is coming up when the Bible gets in your head? A crop of great prosperity, greater than all the world can give you. A crop of peace with God. A crop of reconciliation multiplied to you. Scripture was being multiplied out in many, many heads between 56 and and 66, or you could call it 58 to 68 AD. That's what was happening. The grace of God multiplying out in many heads through his word. New Testament canon was being written. Mark's gospel will come out in this last point here. So will Peter, so will Jude, so will Book of Hebrews. Back here in 56, that's when you... Paul writes Ephesians, okay, 56, 57 there, okay, or you could say 58, 59, all right, that's when Paul's Ephesians goes out, or at least is written, that's when um, Luke's gospel is written, that's when a lot of the letters of Paul had already gone out here, because Paul's letters are mostly here, before he went into prison, but Paul's in prison here. But he writes the prison epistles at this point. Luke's gospel is written during this time. Okay? And then Paul's out of prison by this point. Writing, you know, 2 Timothy, 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. Writing Philemon. I mean, maybe Philemon was a prison epistle, I forget. Okay? So that's the grace of God, isn't it? Grace of God being multiplied in many heads because scripture is being disseminated, the New Testament. Is this, is this why or what? Okay. Grace to you, even the prosperity, the multiplying prosperity. Even multiplying prosperity of what? The word of God. Where? In your head. In your hands. Attesting to what? Rantismon, the sanctify, the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. And isn't that peace to you, Irene? That's where we get the English name Irene. Isn't that peace? You see how clever he is? If you don't know that he's aiming at a certain time period, this is just going to wash right over your head. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. It's not going to, it's got like, oh heck, I hear that every Sunday in church. I've heard it so many times. It doesn't mean anything anymore. Okay, but does it mean something now? The grace of the word of God coming into your head, multiplying as a crop of happiness inside your head. You no longer have to live in order to eat and pee and fornicate or whatever it is you do. You got a better purpose for living now. You can live for God. I'm sorry, there's nothing more enjoyable than that. And there's nothing harder. I get to live for God now. I don't have to live for whether I watch television or have a boyfriend. I can drop all that. I don't have to live. I'm bought, see? I'm bought by the atoning blood of Christ. And where do I know that from? How come I know that? From the multiplying scripture that's coming out during 40 to 66 AD. That's how I know That's real peace. Oh, good. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to concern myself about how pretty I look for some guy that I have to marry in order to have a security in life. I got the security of God instead, honey. This is real peace highlighted in black and gold. That's real peace right there. That's real prosperity right there. The word of God being written down and distributed all over the world because anybody anywhere in the world can travel anywhere in the world in two years, hugging the coasts. Thor Heyerdahl did experiments on that and so did Alan Alda. 
in a PBS series where he showed how you could get to France from North Carolina in like four months. I forget the name of the PBS series he did that in. But he was experimenting on boat travel because they found some artifacts in North Carolina that really belonged in France. So they wanted to see how long the time was to travel to both places. And it was something like four months. So look up Al Alan Alda PBS boat. You should find the series that it's in. You see, by boat, in four months, six months, eight months, a year, the Word of God, multiplying peace into everybody's head. So now you're no longer living for eating and peeing. It's going out to the world. That's true prosperity, honey, I'm sorry. So grace to you, yeah, the word of God is coming to be in your head. Grace to you, even the peace, prosperity, reconciliation, be multiplied. Is that not cute? Just that one phrase, if, 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 you know that it's metered. If, 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 you know what time period it belongs to. Then these aren't just words that you hear on Sunday and go to sleep while you hear them. They're real meaningful, and they make you cry. And I'm going to cry now, so I'm going to sign off. <laughs>